Hey readers, Echo here. I was looking through some old leaf by leaf videos, um, looking for something that uh, Chris has said. And when I, I was looking through a video titled 10 Books I Plan on Reading in 2020, and, uh, and I see in the comments, I see myself. Uh, commenting, loving the idea, and putting out a list of 10 books I wanted to read, and well, I failed horribly at that. I think I read four or five of those 10. Um, but I do think it's fun to to plan and think about, prioritize uh, the books you have and, and what you want to read. Like, um, like he said, the, the, what Chris was, would do is that he would have 10 books that would be his reading core. And um, that would be like the, the minimum reading and, and other books uh, would be less rigid. And I don't know if I'll, I'll stick to these, but uh, I want to talk a bit about the things that I've had on my shelf, shelf for a while that I really am really excited about that I've not come to. Just haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, in no particular order. <clears throat> First off, Loeb. Uh, well, not necessarily Loeb. This is sort of a stand-in for the rest of uh, Tom Mallon's uh, books. I read Knut on Thad uh, Gahidron, and uh, I thought Knut was quite excellent. Uh, and I have all of his books ex uh, except uh, Bedrock, which I still need. Uh, Knut was excellent. Eruina, I, th I think, is supposedly his best book. Um, but, uh, well, I, I mean, it's probably between this and Knut, but... Um, uh, this seems to have quite favorable reviews. Now, Tom Mullen was uh, an English uh, artist. Um, he wrote several plays. He did a lot of painting. Um, his son is still working, I think, on a um, biography of him. Uh, but he, he, through the years, he also sold several of his paintings. And I have to say that um, I'm now quite sad that I didn't uh, get one while there was more of them going around. Because uh, I think Tom Mullen is it's very interesting. Uh, look at the first page here. It's previously stated, the boy-child tinsel was christened bedrock. Translated, bedrock means purposeful. Purposeful tinsel, a syllabic tongue teaser in any language, to be whistled through loosely fitting dentures or spat out like a mouthful of wet air. Tinsel, Bedrock's surname, defied definition until 1927 when a mildewed scholar, H. H. Hum, blew the fluff from his nib and with academic thoroughness, but in a spidery infantile hand, demonstrated that the words tinsel, tinless, and tinjo had a common root that all meant wanderer. It is doubtful if Tinsel the Purposeful would have appreciated H. H. Hum's wry humor. The cynic Loeb did and struck together two flintstones. The clashing of fractured silica nodules and the ensuing spark was Loeb's symbolic gesture at the moment of enlightenment. Unfortunately, sat as he was, nearly thirty years after the purposeful wanderer's birth, and in the carbolic scented, no spitting or smoking allowed, people's library, or was it asylum, in the town of Dim, pronounced dim. Loeb's sudden illumination ignited the tender dry pages of H. H. Hump's treatise of common roots and the resultant fire burned down dim's one and only people's library. It was an act, one of many, of which Loeb, not to be confused with incendiary van der Loeb, was not proud. However, it was a calamity of which the purposeful wanderer knew nothing. Born ignorant, bedrock remained uninformed throughout his life. Unlike Loeb, 
who was a Sasnalika Noel from birth. Um, I really like Tom's uh, pro style. Um, Knuth is this sort of um, uh, sickly uh, Norwegian uh, child uh, in this sort of decaying uh, country castle. You you have like I don't know. It's it's been a while since I read it, but it, but it's it's really it's really an amazing amazing setting. Uh, and uh, uh, it's sort of sort of like a, a decaying Norwegian aristocrat uh, family, uh, very sort of cold and distant, uh, very interesting. I I really quite enjoyed uh, Knut. And as I pointed out before, lucky enough to to have um, have this as a signed copy. Didn't cost much either, but yeah, I feel like I uh, feel like I would like to to get Bedrock, the last one. And uh, and finish my Malin reading because I think it's very good. Secondly, I want to read Those Gods Beyond by Giorgio Manganelli. It's a handsome edition that. Uh, Came out last year, I think. Uh, 2019. Uh, the original book came out in 89, a year before Manganelli died. Um, I think uh, he is very interesting. I think that most people, most people probably aren't too familiar with them. Uh, but of his other translated works, you have Centuria, 100 Orborg novels, and uh, All the Errors. And I think most people are immediately drawn to the Orborg novels uh, because uh, it's, it's sort of these little micro stories, and it's a neat sort of, uh, neat sort of concept. Like he writes on the back of it, it's like uh, it's novels with all the air uh, taken out of it. Um, so it's like an even more hyper compressed uh, what if you like. And I think this is very good, but I actually think all the airs is even better. Um, it's, um, it, it is, I don't know, it's a philosophically dense, um, sort of, some of the stories are really like mathematical, uh, difficult, um, the kind of, they kind of resist reading in a way that I really enjoy. Um, I think uh, I think Maganelli is is very interesting. Uh, sadly, oops, sorry. Sadly, not a lot of it. Uh, not a lot of his works are available. Uh, but um, but what is like the two I have read are just superb, and um, so I have very high, very high hopes for this. 
kind of surprised at myself for not picking it up as soon as um, uh, as soon as I um, got it. And you see that here it says that he was admired by Calvino. It's kind of interesting. Calvino was sort of the Calvino got me into uh, to muscle on Dolphy as well. Uh, lots of um, lots of interesting uh, Italian writers. So, book number two, no particular order. Dojo uh, Manganelli. Next up, Saint Petersburg, the Andre Billy. Um, it's an, it's one of those that I've wanted to read for a very long time, and it took me quite a while to to find a copy. Because uh, I'm silly and sort of try to insist on getting hardbacks of the of especially the books that I that I have very high certainty of enjoying. Like I suspect that this is a book that I will love. Uh, well, for many reasons. Uh, I have friends who who swear that this is uh, an amazing book. Um, you can you can barely you can barely Google I believe without getting pop ups uh, talking about how it's uh, uh, a, a symbolist movement work that sort of laid the groundwork for the early modernism and, and James Joyce and everything and, and you know that all sounds um, uh, sounds delightful uh, sort of and you know they talk about how it's like the, the birth of the modern Russian novel and, and I think that there's lots of interesting uh, stuff happening in that space as well so I need to get Silver Dove. I should probably read it in the uh, sequence, but this is the one that I'm excited about. Next up, um, it's The Marriage of Cadmus and Harmony uh, by Roberto Colasso. Um, he, of course, sadly passed away. Um, I think earlier this year, or was it last year? Um, it's sad anyways, I've not yet read any of him, but, um, but this sounds like, um, a real treat. And one of the reasons why I haven't uh, hopped into it yet is because I'm sort of, sort of been, uh, rereading some of the Greeks and sort of filling in some gaps, um, uh, because uh, it is it is something that I've grown to appreciate more and more uh, the more I read uh, and the more I, I meet uh, more modern literature um, engaging with and uh, reinventing and tackling and and thinking about the Greeks um, and so yeah, this is this is a story of uh, uh, of Zeus and Europa and uh, and Ariadne and um, and apparently uh, he does such an amazing job with this. Uh, I, I've just seen people rave about this, so it's been it's something that I'm. You know, very excited to um, to get to. Um, I have uh, I probably do for a reread reread of the Iliad. Uh, somehow, I have a tendency to reread uh, the Odyssey, but uh, rarely the Iliad. But yeah. Very excited, uh, and I want to get more Colosso as well. I should, but I should probably read this one before I um, hop into it. Next up, 
I want to read Oriental Tales by Margaret Yersenar. I um I read A Blue Tale and Other Stories uh, a while ago. And uh I really liked it. It has um it has sort of some quite striking imagery and nice prose and uh, it wasn't amazing, but I think that um, I think that this is sort of a, a minor work of hers, and and Oriental Tales uh, I think is slightly held higher in uh, regard. Um, and yeah, I she she is a good uh, stylist, and I think that. Um, from what I've heard about this, it should be very interesting. Her crowning achievement is, of course, uh, Hadrian's memoirs. Um, it, like you can, you can just read some of the praise here. Um, and like saying this is a better book than Mr. Graves' uh, epics is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big claim, but. Uh, from everything I've I've read about this, this is supposedly a very psychologically insightful and profound uh, novel that is like extraordinarily literary. It's like you can probably you can describe it as historical fiction, but uh, it apparently reads uh, very much like. Uh, uh, a very finely crafted novel, and and that's not to say that uh, historical fiction can't be well written, but um, uh, it's um, uh, the, like the 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 praise has been superlative, and and of course it's a book about um, uh, Hadrian, is writing uh, his memoirs and telling them to his uh, grandson Marcus Aurelius. And um, I have been putting it off a little bit because I feel like my uh, constantly mm, working on my uh, classical education. I um, I I, f I might just read it and you know. Have that in the reread pile for when I feel I have enough background to uh, to read it. But I I kind of like to to have a sense of the of the setting and the and the literature and the the history uh, before I read it. Um, so yeah. But Oriental tales shouldn't be um, shouldn't be too bad uh, of a place to start, I think. And I will work my way to uh, Hadrian's memoirs uh, when the time is ready.